I'll never forget the heartfelt conversation I had with my father when I shared the news of my engagement. He gently pulled me aside, concern etched on his face, and asked if I was truly certain about marrying Stephen. While he recognized my love for him, he expressed reservations about whether Stephen was the right match for me. Confused, I pressed him for an explanation. My father shared that, although Stephen was caring and respectful, he felt an unease about him and his mother that he couldn't quite articulate, attributing it to a father's instinct. Despite my protests, my father observed that Stephen often boasted about my wealth to his friends, framing me more as a trophy than as an equal partner. He worried that Stephen's affection might not be sincere. At the time, I dismissed my father's concerns, blinded by love and my yearning to hold on to a relationship that felt like a lifeline, especially after losing my mother three years ago and facing my father's declining health. My father had worked hard to build a comfortable life for us, while I had also established my own career. In contrast, Stephen and his mother, Megan, came from a modest background and frequently voiced their discontent with what they perceived as a lack of luxury. Even after moving into my house after the wedding, they remained dissatisfied, always yearning for a more extravagant lifestyle. Looking back, I realized that my father saw things I was unwilling to acknowledge at the time. I was a young woman in love, clinging to the hope that this relationship would provide the support I craved amid my grief and loneliness. Although Stephen and Megan had become my new family, they weren't the sanctuary I had hoped they would be. I clearly remember the moment when Stephen and Megan lamented the size of my townhouse in comparison to my father's mansion. It's such a shame, they said, that with your dad living in such a grand place, you ended up with this tiny house. I explained that, despite my father's wealth, I was just a regular office worker with a modest income and purchasing this house was a significant stretch for me, made possible only through my father's help with the down payment. Megan, ever the materialist, suggested that my father should have bought me a better place, insinuating that there must have been something left for me by my mother, who had passed away unexpectedly without a will. I tried to clarify that whatever my mother had left belonged to my father, and I was satisfied with what I had feeling no sense of entitlement to more. Then Stephen made a bold suggestion that my father should swap houses with us since he lived alone and didn't need all that space, to which Megan eagerly agreed. I was appalled and firmly refused, insisting that the house was my father's, and he deserved to live there comfortably for the rest of his life. Their response was chilling and calculated, as they pointed out that since my father was ill, they could simply wait a few years and everything would eventually be mine to inherit. Their blatant planning for my future inheritance was deeply unsettling. It only worsened when they frequently suggested I ask my father for more money. Despite our financial stability, it was clear they were fixated on living a millionaire lifestyle without any means to support it. The true crisis came after my father passed away from cancer. I was devastated, yet I received little support from Stephen or Megan who seemed more concerned with when they could learn about the will than with my grief. They even refused to attend my father's funeral, dismissing him as someone who meant nothing to them. This left me feeling heartbroken and furious. My father's earlier warnings echoed in my mind, stirring doubts about Stephen and Megan's true intentions. Their increasingly blatant behavior was hard to ignore, and I began to seriously question their motives in our relationship. It became impossible to shake the feeling that Stephen and Megan were primarily interested in my inheritance. Their obsession was particularly evident during the will reading. Outraged at being excluded, Stephen shouted, Why can't we be at the reading of the will? Lawrence is my father-in-law. After all, Megan added, insisting it was absurd that they weren't present to learn what Lawrence had left behind, especially since her son should have some claim. The lawyer's response was blunt, your son isn't mentioned in the will, Megan, so he cannot attend the reading. I confronted them about their fixation on the inheritance, especially given their absence at the funeral. It felt as though my father was only considered family when money was involved. Their behavior only escalated after the will reading, 
when I returned home, they bombarded me with questions, even in my grief. There was no comfort or sympathy. They only seemed interested in the details of my inheritance. So, how much did you inherit from your parents? They must have left you a lot, right? Megan asked eagerly. I replied, more to end their speculation than anything else. Actually, I didn't receive any money. My parents' wealth wasn't left to me. The revelation stunned them. You got nothing? But your parents were wealthy. They must have left you something. Are you sure you're not hiding it from us? Stephen accused. I reassured them. There's no money. You're welcome to check my bank statement. But you won't find any changes. As for their remaining assets, they decided to donate what was left to charity. Their frustration was palpable, and Megan was quick to suggest I contest the will. That's ridiculous. You need to fight for your inheritance. But I stood firm, there's nothing to fight for. My parents chose to give their remaining assets to charity. I respect their decision. Stephen and Megan seemed infuriated by my disinterest in pursuing a non-existent fortune. Their anger and disbelief only reinforced my suspicions about their true motivations. I teetered on the brink of revealing everything, but a nagging doubt held me back. I couldn't shake the feeling that Stephen and his mother, Megan, were conspiring behind my back as they continued to press me for details about the inheritance. I stood my ground, insisting once more that I hadn't received any money, even offering to show them my bank account as proof. Days turned into weeks, and then a month passed, during which Stephen's demeanor shifted dramatically. He became distant and increasingly agitated, frequently checking my bank account and badgering me about the inheritance. It was becoming painfully clear what his true motivations might be. Finally. I reached my breaking point and decided to confront the situation directly. I pulled up my bank statements, determined to confirm that no inheritance had come my way. See? I wasn't lying. There's no secret inheritance, I asserted, hoping this would finally settle the matter. However, their reaction was shocking. Stephen exploded. All our years of effort wasted, so your parents weren't that rich and you didn't even get a dime. This is unbelievable. The disappointment radiating from him was palpable. And then he said something that shattered me. I stayed in this marriage for nothing. I married you for nothing. It was all a waste. What do you mean, Stephen? Why would you say that? I asked, my heart sinking. Megan scoffed. Who would marry you without considering the money? My son married you expecting we could bank on your inheritance. Now we see you got nothing. I can't believe I wasted six years on a useless girl like you. Stephen could have done so much better. Hearing them speak so callously confirmed my worst fears. It was abundantly clear that Stephen had married me for my money. My parents had been right about him and his mother. They were nothing but gold diggers. As much as it hurt, what came next was even more crushing. Megan turned to Stephen with a cold, calculating look. What's done is done, Stephen. But now it's time for you to leave her. There's no reason to stay anymore. You'll have time to find a new rich wife, next time. One who actually has money. Her words struck me like a knife. Are you kidding me, Megan? You're pushing Stephen to divorce me over money? I asked, my voice trembling. Stephen's silence spoke volumes, and it was a defining moment for me. The facade had crumbled, revealing the stark, ugly truth of their intentions. I was heartbroken, but I knew I had to find the strength to move on from this betrayal. Of course, Stephen's response was chillingly pragmatic. I married you because I thought it would secure a comfortable life for me and my mom. We've always struggled. I didn't go to college and had no real means to earn much. I thought marrying you would change that. Assuming your parents would leave you a substantial inheritance that you would share with us. His blunt admission that he had feigned love for financial security stunned me. He continued. It was the only way I thought I could give my mom the life she deserved. But now, seeing that there's no inheritance, it seems my efforts were pointless. 
Mom's right. I need to look forward and keep searching. His words, delivered with a shocking casualness, left me reeling as he and Megan vented their frustration. I found myself tuning them out, overwhelmed by the enormity of their deceit. Their complete lack of empathy and Stephen's abrupt change in demeanor were both deeply upsetting and infuriating. I felt an urge to scream, to lash out at their callousness, but I managed to restrain myself. Instead, I responded calmly, All right, Stephen, if a divorce is what you want, then that's what you'll get. I've never denied your requests. Consider this my final favor to you. Megan, ever the antagonist, jumped in. Don't think this means you can take alimony from my son. We'll fight you tooth and nail before you see a cent of that. I replied firmly. You're right. I don't have much money at the moment. So here's what I propose. A mutual divorce with no division of assets or alimony. You don't have much. And neither do I right now. If you forego alimony, I'll agree to sign and won't claim anything further from you. As we discussed the details of our divorce, the conversation felt stark and transactional devoid of any emotional connection, reflecting the cold reality of our relationship's end. It was evident that Stephen and Megan were pleased by my lack of drama throughout the process. Perhaps they were surprised by my composed demeanor, unaware that I was unraveling privately each day. On my way to work, tears streamed down my face, and I often spent hours crying alone in my car before and after work. Neither Stephen nor Megan seemed to notice my puffy eyes or questioned why my daily routine had suddenly stretched longer. Once Megan realized there was no inheritance in my future, she barely acknowledged my existence, only solidifying my resolve to end this marriage swiftly. I made arrangements for Stephen and Megan to move out of my house and into a rented apartment nearby. They settled in quickly, and as the divorce proceedings advanced, Stephen honored our agreement and did not claim any part of my house. In turn, I didn't seek alimony from him. It was a straightforward exchange. On the day our divorce was finalized, I decided to take one last step. I visited their rental to return my wedding and engagement rings. Standing at their doorstep, I said, I just want to return these. This marriage brought nothing but distress into my life and I prefer not to keep any reminders of it. Megan scoffed, seizing the opportunity to taunt me. Are you sure? You might need the money. It's amusing that you once looked down on our poverty, and now look at your situation. My son is being generous by letting you keep the rings. You might need to sell them when your job falls through. Her words stung, but I retorted with a laugh, which seemed to confuse both her and Stephen. Why would I need to sell the rings for money? Megan, you don't need to feel embarrassed for me. We already know my parents left me nothing. They lost it all to poor decisions, leaving their daughter with nothing, or so you think. My laughter in the face of their cruelty seemed to unsettle them. I could see a hint of annoyance in Stephen's expression, perhaps embarrassed by his mother's bluntness. As I turned to leave, their baffled faces indicated they still hadn't grasped the extent of my independence and resilience. I walked away knowing I was finally free from their toxicity, ready to rebuild my life on my terms. Stephen appeared puzzled by my laughter, while Megan, annoyed, demanded, Why the hell are you laughing? Did I say something funny? Her disbelief only fueled my amusement. It's truly hilarious how you think I'm destitute. Megan and even more amusing that you believe my parents squandered their entire fortune. Megan snapped back, convinced of her narrative. Of course you're destitute. Your parents didn't leave you a penny. They surely ruined your life by not leaving you an inheritance. I couldn't help but smirk at Megan's misunderstanding. I never said I didn't receive an inheritance. Megan, I simply told you that I didn't get any money. In fact, my parents left me quite the inheritance. Confusion clouded her face. What the hell does that mean? You have an inheritance? I nodded, relishing the moment. My parents saw right through you and Stephen as the gold diggers you are. They included a secret clause in their will. They left me no money. 
but instead, I inherited this entire neighborhood. Megan's shock was palpable. You own this neighborhood? How is that possible? We would have known about your inheritance. We even signed our lease with an estate manager who didn't mention the owner's name. My parents wanted me to wait a year before claiming my inheritance. I continued. They wanted me to test you and see if you were with me for money or love. You failed that test. And now you won't receive anything from me. The estate manager was appointed by my parents to manage the property until I could claim it. They were very clever. That's impossible. I don't believe a word you're saying. You're just embarrassed because you have no money. Megan retorted, disbelief etched across her face. Stephen chimed in, skeptical yet curious. Oh, really? Is that what you think happened? His tone was mocking, but a hint of doubt flickered in his eyes. Well, why don't we just call the landlord and find out from him? Go ahead, I encouraged, fully aware of what the outcome would be. With a mix of defiance and desperation, Megan and Stephen called their landlord, who was indeed the estate manager. As they listened, their expressions transformed from confidence to shock. The estate manager confirmed everything I had said. After hanging up, their faces reflected a mix of anger and panic. You lied to us, Megan accused, her voice trembling. You tricked us into thinking you had nothing. Standing there and watching their realization dawn, I felt a strange mix of vindication and sadness. Their obsession with wealth had blinded them to the value of genuine relationships, and now they were reaping the consequences of their greed and deceit. Stephen and Megan stood there dumbfounded, grappling with the fact that I now own the entire housing community. You've kept all this wealth to yourself. You tricked Stephen into divorcing you and made sure he wouldn't claim anything. Megan spat her voice tinged with desperation and betrayal. I couldn't help but laugh at their desperate attempt to twist the narrative. It's quite ironic that you're calling me the trickster. I responded, fully aware of the irony in their accusation. Stephen, you married me under false pretenses, claiming love where there was none. And Megan, you coached him into this, even pushing for the divorce, thinking there'd be no financial loss for you. If anyone's the scammer here, it's both of you. The truth was simple. They had inquired about my financial gains from the inheritance, and I had answered honestly. This was all a big misunderstanding, wasn't it? But what's done is done. It's curious, though, how you're suddenly interested in rekindling things now that you know about my inheritance. And Stephen, aren't you already courting another wealthy woman? Don't worry. I'll make sure she knows exactly who you are. As the reality of their situation sunk in, Stephen and Megan began to plead. Stephen even had the audacity to ask me not to interfere with his new relationship if I wasn't willing to give him a second chance. My response was blunt, get lost. I informed them that once the property transfer was finalized, they would be evicted. Over the following weeks, they repeatedly showed up at my doorstep begging for forgiveness. Their desperation was palpable, especially since they already had an eviction on their record, making it difficult for them to find a new place. The only reason they remained on my property was that I had instructed the estate manager to allow it temporarily. Taking matters into my own hands, I reached out to Stephen's new interest and told her everything. She was appalled by their actions and ended things with him immediately even sharing their text exchanges with me as proof of the breakup. After that debacle, when Stephen and Megan resorted to verbally attacking me, I had no choice but to call the police. Their actions had crossed all boundaries of decency, confirming that my decision to distance myself from them was not only justified but necessary. Once the inheritance was officially transferred into my name, I didn't hesitate to evict Stephen and Megan from the property. They seemed shocked that I followed through with my threat. Despite their initial disbelief, they attempted to come back onto my property, prompting me to call the police again. The officers gave them a stern warning, and I proceeded to file for a restraining order to ensure they would stay away. Word of our altercation quickly spread throughout the town, 
and soon enough, everyone knew about their deceitful behavior. As a result, they found themselves socially ostracized, forcing them to leave the city and try to start fresh elsewhere. Meanwhile, I've been relishing my newfound financial independence, liberated from the clutches of gold-digging leeches. I'm now free to enjoy my life and the wealth my parents wisely left me, ensuring it benefits someone who truly appreciates their legacy.